our goal here in section 4.6 is to overcome the problems and the, the methodology of the superposition approach and also the annihilator approach. If you think about it, the annihilator approach is really the same as the superposition approach just with the idea of trying to fix the glitch problem. Here, uh, variation of parameters is the method of, we're still trying to solve the non-homogeneous differential equation, which uh, in most circles, this is probably the best method uh, that you will see uh, here and also in other courses that you will take. Um, uh, uh, instructors or researchers will refer to solving a differential equation um, that becomes tedious um, and that is homogeneous, well, excuse me, non-homogeneous, they will refer to the so-called variation of parameters method. So it's a very useful uh, method in differential equations. Um, So we seek to solve number one. Well, well, that was the same goal for section 4.4 and 4.5, to solve the non-homogeneous differential equation. Here, uh, uh, previously, uh, we solved uh, uh, using the method of uh, undetermined uh, coefficients. That's section 4.4, uh, the superposition approach. Today, we uh, will use uh, here one of our favorite methods, and that is the method of um, variation of parameters. A couple of things we're going to do to set this up. Let me see if I can scroll down to, to show you all of that. Number one is that non-homogeneous differential equation of nth degree. We seek to solve that. What we do here is we let n equal to 2. We seek to solve the second order. Uh, 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 non-homogeneous differential equation. So we seek to solve number two. We can rewrite number two by dividing uh, everything in this equation by a sub two. And so then our p of x, you remember, is nothing more than a sub one divided by a sub two. And the g of x is, uh, the q of x, excuse me, is a naught divided by a sub two. f of x becomes g of x divided by a sub 2. You don't want to forget that. And so, um, the particular solution for the variation of parameter, and then also even for Green's function, I, I don't have time to cover Green's function. I, 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 I need to because in uh, 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 mechanical engineering, um, industrial engineering, and I want to say a little bit of electrical, uh, 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 you'll see Green's function which is a really cool way of solving the same thing, um, solving the non-homogeneous differential equation. Um, but the way that the solution for y sub p is set up for Green's function and then here also for the variation of parameters is this. y is set to equal to some parameter times y sub 1 plus some other parameter times y sub 2. Now look, if this is a third order differential equation, you have obviously uh, uh, plus some third parameter, uh, u sub 3 times times y sub 3. So, But here, uh, we restrict our discussion to the second order, so we only have two of these terms here. So our, our solution for y sub p would be of this form. So we end up with the solution always being written and how the superposition uh, principle said that y is equal to y sub c plus y sub p. This will only give us y sub p. Y sub c is easier to solve for. Right? Two things we assume. Two things we assume. Um, this method is called variation parameters. What are those parameters? Uh, uh, this uh, 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 u sub 1 and u sub 2. Uh, the u sub 1 and u sub 2 are to be determined. So um, we interject them into the method of solving, and, and thusly we solve for. And once you solve for them, um, you, you, you can go back and, 
and, and check to make sure everything is well defined. It is well defined. Um, so we assume two things. We assume that um, WASP 1 and WASP 2 are your solutions from the complementary solution, right? So we assume that WASP 1 times uh, uh, U sub 1 prime is derivative plus uh, 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 WASP 2 times U sub 2 prime is equal to zero. And then the second assumption is that we just take the derivatives uh, of, of y sub 1 and y sub 2. So this becomes y sub 1 prime times u sub 1 prime plus y sub 2 prime times u sub 2 prime is equal to f of x. What are we doing? We're simply setting up the Warren scheme. The Warren scheme based on, on y sub 1, y sub 2, and then that, that next uh, uh, row would be y sub 1 prime, y sub 2 prime. That's, that's all we're doing. We're setting up the Warren scheme uh, here so that we can solve uh, using the Warren scheme. Matter of fact, it's the Warren scheme coupled with, do you recall Kramer's rule? Kramer's rule? It's the Warren scheme coupled with Kramer's rule. So basically, we're trying to solve a system of equations. Here, a system that involves derivatives. Um, and so that's why we use the, the Warren scheme. So steps to solving uh, differential equations using variation parameters. What we're going to do, number one, always, we solve the complementary solution. Solve for y sub 1 and y sub 2. We can do that already. Number two, assume two things. Uh, assume this first row, assume that uh, y sub 1 times uh, u sub 1 prime plus y sub 2 times u sub 2 prime is equal to 0. Then the second row, uh, assume uh, that uh, y sub 1 prime uh, times u sub 1 prime plus y sub 2 prime times u sub 2 prime is equal to f of x. Step number three, this is a system, this is the uh, second uh, uh, dimension system, so we're going to solve those determinants using the Warren scheme. So here, the Warren scheme for, uh, for y sub 1 y sub 1 prime, y sub 2, and, and y sub 2 prime is here. Kramer's rule says uh, w sub 1 is the replacing of the first column with the solution column, 0 and f of x. Right. And then for Kramer's rule, y sub 2 simply says replace the second column. Replace what? Well, well this becomes our main uh, determinant. Replace its second column with 0 f of x solve for these determinants. And so variation of parameter, the goal is can you solve for the parameter? And the parameter helps us solve the solution for the differential equation. So now we solve for, we can't solve for u sub 1 and u sub 2 because they're derivatives first. So we have to be able to first identify, solve for uh, 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 u sub 1 prime and u sub 2 prime. So u sub 1 prime, and, and this is strictly Kramer's rule. It, it becomes uh, w sub 1 divided by w. And then uh, u sub 2 prime becomes w sub 2 divided by w. Now, once you do that, then we're going to integrate uh, uh, here, integrate uh, this u sub 1 prime to solve for u sub 1. Uh, uh, integrate u sub 2 prime to solve for u sub 2. Since they're already a derivative, if I integrate, that's the antiderivative, I can get the term, I can get the parameter. And so, so at the end of step five, you would have solved for u sub 1 and u sub 2, but we said in the beginning that y sub p is of the form u sub 1, the, the first parameter, times uh, the first solution from the complementary uh, solution, plus y sub 2 times u sub 2. And then according then to the superposition of principle, you can write the, the general solution, y is equal to y sub c plus y sub p. So we've been doing this you know, for a while, uh, starting back in section 4.1. And so that carries us uh, throughout uh, the remainder of this course in terms of how you write the solution. Now let's take a problem. That's a, a lot to, to deal with. Uh, I think the problems, and once you work two or three of them, you kind of get the idea. You're doing the same steps for every problem. You, know, you do this, you do the next step, step number three, step number four, step number five, step number six. So let me see if I can uh, lead you through that. Uh, let's take this first problem here. 
So the first thing they want us to do is to solve for the homogeneous uh, differential equation. So solve y double prime plus y is equal to zero. Its auxiliary equation is m squared plus one is equal to zero. So we get m is equal to plus or minus i. So y sub c becomes c sub 1 times cosine x plus c sub 2 times sine x. So all we need from here is that y sub 1 is cosine x and y sub 2 is sine x. Step number two, we assume the two, th two things. Um, and I, I should note before I write the assumptions, note here that y sub p will be of the form y sub 1 times u sub 1 plus y sub 2 times u sub 2 where u sub 1 and u sub 2 are the parameters, the parameters for this method variation of parameters. So here we assume, we assume y sub 1 times u sub 1 prime plus y sub 2 times u sub 2 prime is equal to 0, and y sub 1, its derivative, times u sub uh, 1 prime plus y sub 2 prime times u sub 2 prime is equal to f of x. Now, f of x is this g of x divided by here 1, so our f of x is that secant, secant x. So let's write that out. So this becomes cosine x times u sub 1 prime plus parentheses sine x times u sub 2 prime is equal to 0. Take the derivative of the cosine, so we get negative sine x times u sub 1 prime plus the derivative of sine is cosine x times u sub 2 prime is equal to that secant x. Now from this system, I want to write W, capital W becomes our complementary solutions with their derivatives. So this is cosine x coming from here, then negative sine x, then sine x, cosine x. Compute the determinant. You recall that the determinant is these two terms, then minus these two terms multiplying. So cosine times cosine is cosine squared x. It is minus this minus, that becomes plus sine times sine is sine squared x. Well, it just gives us one there. Now, w sub 1 is the determinant where we replace the first uh, column here with 0 <coughs> secant x. So this is 0 secant x. And then the second column stays the same, sine cosine.
we compute its determinant, multiply zero times cosine, that's zero, then it's minus that's sine x times secant x. Well, secant is one over cosine, so this is just negative sine x divided by uh, cosine, that's just negative tangent. Find W sub 2. The first column would stay the same, cosine, negative sine. He will replace the second uh, column, replace the second column here with 0 secant x. find our determinant. That's a, that's a S there. So this is cosine x times secant x. Well, cosine times secant. Secant is just one over cosine, so this is one. So now, we say that the parameter, its derivative, u sub 1 prime is equal to w sub 1 divided by w. Well, w sub 1 we got to be negative tan x all over 1. w is equal to 1. So that's just negative tangent x. And then u sub 2 prime is w sub 2 divided by w. Well, that's just 1 divided by 1. It's just equal to 1. So this is all steps 2, 3, 4, you know. I kind of got beside myself and just, just worked the problem, you know. But it's step two, step three for the Warren scheme, step four, then step five, we integrate these guys here. So u sub one is the integral The, the integral of u sub 1 prime dx. Right? Take, its, take the integral of the antiderivative and I get the original function. So this is the integral of, we got negative tangent. What's the integral of tangent x? Hmm? The integral, not the derivative. It does involve the natural law, yes. Yes, sir. Everybody got that? You remember that? <laughs> you tell by your faces, no. <laughs> well, you, you need to go back and make sure you, you work with that. So here, think about tangent as being sine divided by cosine. And so if you let u equal to cosine du, is a negative sign. So all you have there is the integral of du divided by u, which is the natural log of u. u is the cosine, right? And it's a negative sitting out there. So it's negative times this negative, because the integral of tangent is going to be negative. So this is just the natural log of the absolute value of cosine x. The superposition approach uh, takes into consideration those constants. Hmm. It it got tangled up into the integral of tangent. The integral of tangent is negative natural log of cosine. So negative times negative is positive. U sub two um, is equal to the integral 
of u sub 2 prime dx, which is just the integral of 1 dx, just get x. So y sub p, which is said to be uh, y sub 1 times u sub 1 plus y sub 2 times u sub 2. Well, y sub 1 is that cosine x times u sub 1, which is the natural log of the absolute value of cosine x, then plus sine x, which is y sub 2 times x. Just say x here times sine x. So our solution, y is equal to, we said y sub c plus, this is the sixth step, write the solution, plus y sub p. So this is c sub 1 times cosine x plus c sub 2 times sine x plus cosine x times the natural log of the absolute value of cosine x plus x times sine x. Good thing there is that there is no let y sub p equal to some generic term and like ax squared plus bx plus c. Uh, tell you what, that method becomes very cumbersome when it involves sines and cosines for the superposition approach for section 4.4 and 4.5. Right. Any questions there? Let me do another one uh, here, very similar. Make sure you get it. Well, that first part is, that was the, the first part for number one, right? Y double prime plus Y. So here, we have that solution. Um, Solving, solving y double prime plus y equal to zero implies that y sub c is c sub one times cosine x plus c sub two times sine x. Let y sub p be of the form y sub one times u sub one plus y sub 2 times u sub 2. Assume cosine x times u sub 1 prime plus sine x times u sub 2 prime is equal to 0. Oh, yeah. f of x is sine x divided by 1, so it's just sine x. And that's an s right there. Take the derivative, so we get negative sine x times u sub 1 prime plus the derivative of that sign is cosine x times u sub 2 prime is equal to sine x f of x. So from here we extract w. So w is cosine x negative sine x, then 
over here, sine x, cosine x. Again, that gave us 1. W sub 1 replaced the first column with 0 sine x. The second column stays the same. Sine x, cosine x. So this, this is 0 minus sine squared. W sub 2, the first column stays the same, cosine x, negative sine x. Replace the second column with 0 sine x. So here, for W sub 2, all we have is cosine x times sine x minus 0. So this is just cosine x times sine x. u sub 1 prime is equal to w sub 1 divided by w. Well, w sub 1 is that negative sine square x divided by 1. So that's just negative sine square x. And then u sub 2 prime is equal to w sub 2 divided by w. Well, this is cosine x times sine x all over 1. This is cosine x times sine x. Again, this is step 2, step 3, step 4. Step 5, we integrate. So I want to find u sub 1. It's the integral of u sub 1 prime dx. So this is negative the integral of sine square x dx. How do we integrate uh, sine square x dx? And then the, yes. I heard somebody. Hmm? Set sine equal to u? No, because du is not a factor in the integrand. You can do that for that cosine x sine x, but you can't do it for sine square x. It's chapter 8 in calculus 2, um, 8.4, something like that, uh, um, uh, integrating uh, trigonometric forms. Get combinations either of sine, cosine, secant, tangent, um, and then if it's the integral of sine raised to a power times cosine raised to a power, what do you do? Odd, even terms, and then um, uh, um, and then what if you have the integral of sine raised to a power? What do you do? What what do you do when you have the integral of cosine raised to a power? And then there was a special case that if it's the integral of sine squared x. You use a trig identity, and if it's the integral of cosine square x, you use a trig identity. So, how do we integrate that sine square x? You want to represent that sine square x with something that you can integrate. Do you remember the uh, the so-called double angles? He said vaguely. Oh, okay. Uh, recall, and, and maybe I should change the color. Recall that um, 
sine square x is the same thing as 1 minus cosine 2x all over 2. Okay. And with that one, you remember cosine square x is 1 plus cosine 2x. And then, let's see. Remember this one? Sine 2x is equal to 2 times cosine x times sine x. Maybe you thought you would never use that anymore. So, <laughs> you, 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 you learned that and then just fell by the wayside, I reckon. Well, well I'll try to help you call it back up. <laughs> well, so this u sub 1 is the integral, it's negative sign. So, negative sine square x dx, so that's the integral, negative times the integral of 1 minus cosine 2x all over 2 dx. I'm going to go ahead and finish this. This is, just integrate, this is negative, and you help me, negative 1 half x plus, uh oh, one fourth sine two x. Again, the plus c will be taken care of by the superposition approach. So we integrate. This is this is negative times the integral of one half dx. So that's a negative one half x, and then this is negative times that negative. And it's a half sitting in front of that cosine 2x, so it's the integral, one half times the integral of cosine 2x. What's the, what's the integral of cosine 2x? Negative 1 half sine, exactly. You have to let u equal to that 2x, and du is the 2dx. You have a half uh, fraction in there, right? And the integral of cosine is just sine. The integral of sine is a negative cosine. Right? Remember, don't get mixed up with the derivatives and the integrals. Right? So that's why we get the one fourth sine two x. Well, this is using the same uh, uh, box here of identities. This is negative one half x plus, and in the word of that great heron of a physics instructor at Alabama State University in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s, Dr. Goraya, his favorite word in cases like this would be, uh-oh. <laughs> this is, uh-oh, one half cosine x I'm sine x. This right here. That's my orchestra composer. Right. Do you see that? JC, do you see that? Okay. Christian, Christian said no. <laughs> Christian, he, Christian told the truth. JC told the tale. Now this joke. Sine two x is said to be two cosine x sine x, right? So this is sine two x, which is two cosine x sine x times one fourth becomes one half cosine x sine x. Now, u sub 2 prime is the integral of 
uh, USIP, just USIP2, excuse me. We integrate it. It's the integral of USIP2 prime dx. USIP2 is cosine x times sine x. the integral of that dx, excuse me, so, u sub 2 prime, that's what it was, I believe, u sub 2 prime is cosine x sine x. So we integrate this, let u equal to sine x, Christian, and so du picks up cosine x dx. So this gives us u squared divided by 2, but u is sine x, so this is sine squared x all over 2. Everybody with me there? JC. Let, let u equal to sine x. du is cosine x. So wouldn't that be this use of two is equal to is equal to the integral of u du. U is sine x, du is the cosine x dx. So isn't that integral u square all over two? And isn't that sine squared x over 2. Okay, so, um, so y sub p is y sub 1 times u sub 1 plus y sub 2 times u sub 2. Well, y sub 1 was the uh, cosine x and u sub 1 is parentheses what we got up here, negative one half x plus one fourth. Let's simplify that. That's negative one half x plus one half cosine x sine x. Using that. plus one half cosine x sine x and then plus y sub two which is sine x times u sub two which is sine square x divided by two and simplify this if there's any simplification in there. So y sub p is negative one half x cosine x plus one half cosine squared x sine x plus sine cubed x all over two. Can we simplify this a little bit further? This is negative one half x cosine x. Plus we can factor out a one half and a sine from here. So this is one half sine x. I have left cosine squared x plus sine squared x. Well, cosine squared plus sine squared is one. So y sub p is negative one half x cosine x plus one half sine x. Step number six, the answer, y is equal to y sub c plus y sub p. This is c sub one times cosine x.
plus c sub 2 times sine x plus y sub p. This is minus 1 half x cosine x. That's the answer. Yes. You got a problem with that? How come you don't have a problem with that? JC's thinking. What are you thinking, JC? Joshua. If there was a Moses, there has to be a Joshua. Okay, the answer is supposed to be y sub c plus y sub p, right? So y sub c is the c1 cosine x plus c2 sine x. Y sub p is negative 1 half x cosine x plus 1 half sine x. But how come I didn't write the plus 1 half sine x over here? Hmm? <laughs> Christian, he, he says what people who normally know me would say, you must have forgot something, right? Well, typically, I do. <laughs> but I didn't this time. I was smart. <laughs> Different from different from what? They're they're the same. If I if I wrote plus one half sine x, isn't that included in the c sub two sine x? So if I wrote this part over here, my solution would be linearly dependent and not linearly independent. Because you can simply say you can come here and say. Uh, one half sine x plus c sub two sine x, and you can factor out the sine x, and you have c sub two uh, plus one half. You can let c sub three equal to c sub two plus one half, and so you still get uh, some constant times sine x. <laughs> right? That's the solution. Well, you should be good to go for section 4.6. Uh, do me this favor. What I need you to do is to do the homework for section 4.6. Watch my video for 4.7. It's a lot there. I want to be able to cover that section uh, within uh, uh, Wednesday when we come. Typically, I take two days for that to go through some of the proofs. And uh, just like how I did back in the previous section, I think for 4.3, I want you to watch that. And so when you come on Wednesday, I take what's there and we'll just work some problems uh, in that section for 4.7. So watch my video for 4.7. Uh, try to get an understanding of how we built that information and then I'll work problems here in class. If you have questions, just let me know when you come back. Thank you.